you guys are just tired of sitting down. <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lynn. Wow, I didn't know all that stuff happened, but uh, you know, being around that guy was was uh, really something, and being around Coach Johnson was equally as amazing every single day. I uh, I finally figured out why uh, they you guys chose Mark and I to be men of the year. I don't think it's anything to do with what we did. I think we're the only guys that you can see over those huge <laughs> centerpieces. <laughs> I'd like to introduce my wife, Wendy. She's right there. Wendy, stand up. Thank you, Wendy. And thank you to Dr. Simpson, to everyone, to Raul for amazing all the work and all you guys did and the Americana Committee for everything. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you my story very quickly. But I want to tell you about the spirit of cycles. The spirit of cycles. I was born in a little country called Holland. Wooden shoes, windmills. You know why we had windmills? You know why? You know we have cows too, right? The windmills were only to blow the cow stink over to Germany. They're all <laughs> facing east. I was also a UCLA uh, grad. Well, we'll get into that in a UCLA, we got any USC fans over here? Okay, I'll speak a little slower then. Thank you. But I, was, I wasn't going to tell any jokes. I was, Jack, Jack made me tell a couple jokes. Okay, so I was born in Netherlands at the age of zero. I, my mom and dad divorced when I was three. My... Uh, my mom could only take care of one of the three kids. I was in the middle, my little brother, my sister, and uh, then uh, my sister was the oldest. I was right in between. So my sister and I stayed in uh, with a friend, and then my mom and stepdad and my little brother came, and they said, we're going to America. And I said, yeah, we're going to America, All right? Roy Rogers, that was it. Roy Rogers for me, I, went, I was ready. But, well, you're not going. We're going to leave you and your sister behind, and we're going to go, and then we're going to get some money together. We're going to get you guys over there. I'm telling this really fast because this is, uh, you guys are sleepy. <laughs> um, so they went to America, and my sister and I stayed with that friend, and then we ended up staying at uh, three foster homes. And it was three years later, four years later, and then finally in an orphanage for a couple of years. And then a television progr program called It Could Be You. How many remember It Could Be You, the forerunner of This Is Your Life? Surprised. My mom and stepdad on stage, they were at this show on Saturday, thinking that they were just there to watch the show. They got free tickets. All of a sudden, the host called them up. A, uh, a curtain opened up. A little windmill was up there. My sister and I were behind the windmill, and we came out and greeted them. Isn't that amazing? Yes. What was really amazing was that flight from Amsterdam over to New York. First time I ever had ice cream. My on the way home, my stepfather said to my uh, mother, in Dutch, so I could understand it, now we've got another two miles to feed. The next 10 years, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Lubin, Coach Johnson, no, was hell on earth for me with that man. Hell on earth for me in Cyprus on Molokai Drive. No friends, no sports. No hot showers. He took the lock off the bathroom so he can go in and check the water. If I was in the shower and that water was lukewarm, I got my butt beat. I got my chip, my tooth chipped. I got whipped with a tennis shoe on my lower back to where there was whelps. Today, my dad would have been, my stepdad would have been arrested. I never got to go to a dentist. I had three, four cavities. He said, just put an aspirin on it. I went to sleep every night when I was a freshman. They never knew with an aspirin on my tooth just to be able to go to sleep. In a bed that was so small, my, my feet stuck out the end through the spokes. I couldn't even turn around. I left, I left home at the beginning of my sophomore year. The summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I worked very, very hard. Lubin, Coach Lubin took me to the ghetto to play every 
single Saturday. He went and talked to my stepdad, sweet-talked him into letting me go. Whatever my dad was into, he'd compliment him. He was into doves or birds or something. Oh, those are the most beautiful birds I've ever seen, Mr. Langenberg. And then, you know, butter him up for a, uh, about a half hour. And by the way, you think, think I might be able to take Swin over to L.A. and let him play some ball? Ah, sure, get him out there. No problem. Every Saturday. And the next year, I became an All-American. But at the beginning of the year, my teeth were so bad. By then, that there was no teeth left. Four teeth were gone. Finally, some of my teammates found out about it. They went and found a dentist who did $22,000 worth of work. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a Cyprus, a friend of Cyprus. The spirit of Cyprus. The first time I walked on campus at, at, uh, at Cyprus College, Tom Lubin asked me, Did you, do you want to play basketball? I was 6'9", and really thin. I was 180 pounds. I mean, I couldn't even keep my seat down in the movies. That, that's, you know. <laughs> I was so thin I had to wear skis in the shower so I wouldn't go down the drain. <laughs> but I put on a little weight after that. And he asked me, do you want to play basketball? I said, well, yeah, maybe. I was still living at home with my stepdad, you know. I knew he wasn't going to let me play. I was 18. I was under the dominance of that man. But I said, yeah, I'll play. So he took me in the outside courts. We didn't have a gym yet. Just like Mark, the hook shot. I said, I can do this, but I couldn't touch that rim twice in a row at six foot nine. I'm the guy that they coined the phrase, phrase after, there's no shorter time span known to man than white hang time, <laughs> right? I couldn't jump. It was terrible, but I learned how to jump. I got, ended up with a 34 inch vertical through hard work. Okay, I'm gonna go on. Gene Lambden. One of our first assistant coaches. I was out there practicing by myself. Gene Lambda comes out and said, you shoot a free throw, and then you go get it, and you walk the ball back to the free throw line. Why don't you dribble it and get some practice? I said, you know, that's the spirit of Cyprus. <laughs> Everybody out there trying to help you. Everybody was trying to help me. Russ Sharples. Nobody knows the guy. One of our best athletes, possibly our greatest athletic basketball player. Six foot seven, could dunk behind his head and say your mama at the same time, which he did often to me <laughs> my first year. Russ Sharples could almost jump up and sit in the hoop and wait for your shot. That guy was amazing. He taught me once after practice, he said, Swen, when you jump, you go like this, and then you kind of go up real easy like this. Why don't you go 90 degrees and just explode? Let your muscles contract and get up there. I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> and I tried that the very next practice, and all of a sudden I'm jumping four or five inches higher. Coach puts me in a game, the next game against Orange Coast College, and I blocked this, one of the best centers in the, in the States. His first jump shot, I knock it back. I just knock it all the way down the court. We go and lay it up. I go, you know what? That works. <laughs> Russ Sharples, the spirit of Cyprus. You, did you hear the name Bruce Randall tonight? Oh my gosh, Bruce Randall, one of the greatest human beings ever. Get, would do anything. I left home when my stepdad one day said, no more basketball for you. This is at the beginning of my sophomore year. I am one of the better centers in the state. And I've got a career going. And he's saying, no more basketball. After practice, you're coming right home. That next morning, I packed my bags and I never came back. And Bruce Randall took me in. The spirit of Cyprus. The spirit of Cyprus. I grew two inches between my freshman year and my sophomore year. I came back the second year with the same clothes, and they were like this, right? They were like this. My teammates saw it. They all chipped in together and bought me some new clothes. The spirit of Cyprus, ladies and gentlemen, was there. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't the spirit of Cyprus. Don Johnson, one of the best coaches we've ever seen in this country, in this world. No ego. 
No ego in that man. But a fierce competitor. And you don't see that combination very often. No ego. Everything for us. Do you see that? The spirit of Cyprus. The teachers. The teachers are still here. They go back to bed. I don't know. <laughs> You're one of them, right? All for the kids. And you know, oh, and there's somebody else that I got to mention. Colette Johnson. Where's Colette? Colette, I love you so much. Coach Johnson's wife. What she did for us? Everything. And Dorothy Lubin, right there. Everything. And Margaret. Everything. Margaret. Oh, my gosh. And Jack and Mark, the spirit of Cyprus was there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to explain it. It was special. And it's the reason why I'm standing up here today. After I got uh, finished at, at uh, Cyprus, I went to UCLA, right? And then I went on to, uh, to play professional basketball. I went to the ABA and played for uh, Virginia Squires, San Antonio Spurs, and the New York Nets, and back to the Virginia Squires. Nobody wanted me, I guess. They just kept moving me around. <laughs> and then the ABA folder went to the NBA, and I ended up with uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Buffalo Braves. We moved to San Diego and became the Clippers. Nobody in Washington knows that. I'm from Seattle. <laughs> um, Clippers didn't do too well <laughs> at times. But we got snowed out uh, trying to get into Cleveland one day, and we threw a victory party. I play for the Lakers. We got any, do we have any Boston Celtics fans here today? Okay, I will speak a little slower then also, okay? All right, I'm almost done. And then they came. Whenever we'd come from uh, I, I, wherever city I played, and we'd play in San Diego or L.A. And the ABA was San Diego Conquistadors. And the Conquistadors, every time we went to Conquistadors, there they were at the game. Of course, I got them tickets, but, you know. They were at the game. <laughs> I don't know if I didn't get them tickets, whether they, they're probably still down there. Probably waiting there for me to get them tickets, but no. They were always there. Not just Johnson and Lubin, but Randall and, and Mark Miller. and There's a bunch of them. They were there, guys. And they supported me after I finished. The spirit of Cyprus. The spirit of Cyprus. The reason I tell you this is the reason, more than any other educational institution, that a, a community college exists is to get people going, to get people going to the next level. That's why it's there. Every institution is like that, but there's none quite where, where, where it's as important because people like me go there who need, who are looking for somebody, something to get me going, something to get me to that next level. And it's not just sports. It's in everything. There are math students, there are history students, there are people who want to become lawyers, but just don't have the means, don't have something, and they're looking for it at the community college level. That's why they're there. And back in the day, the spirit of Cyprus was doing that. And I was able to get a scholarship, so I didn't need any money. But there are people out there today that need money. They're at Cypress College. They're very talented. And they're students of every kind. And these funds that we're raising today are going to sponsor some of these students that need that start, just like I got a start. And that's why I'm here today, guys, because I want to see that happen. And I want to thank you for, for what you've done to make that happen. God bless all of you.